Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Sauberlab and after a few videos explain a little bit about cache in the TrueNAS, how much RAM memory you need to have in order to run your TrueNAS, come the question, is it still worth for you to use TrueNAS in 2025? And in this video we're going to explain a little bit more about it, we're going to tell the positive side, negative side, what the system can do, also, we're going to compare this system to other systems as Unraid, OpenMediaVal and the Synology SM. After this video, at least you can make a choice of your best open system and if you decide to go to TrueNAS, at least you're going to understand what they can offer for you. So, if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're going to show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider subscribing for the channel if you're not subscribed then let's understand a little bit more about it. After show how you can set up Trunas, how you can set up pools, how you can set up applications, explain a little bit more about Trunas, it's interesting to understand if it's still worth to use the Trunas. So if you guys come here my screen, the topic of this video is, is TrueNAS is still worth in 2025 because now we have a lot of different operating system and also the question is it's the best one for your DOI system or it's only one other operating system. First let's try to understand what is TrueNAS. TrueNAS have two options. You have the TrueNAS scale and TrueNAS core. TrueNAS score it's free but a little bit old and what we're gonna look is TrueNAS scale what is based on Linux have a lot of apps and Principally, they have Docker. Docker is a place or this container manager that you can install lots of different containers and in this way you have lots of applications. Basically, anything that you imagine you can go for GitHub and someone create a container. Potentially, not to work 100% the way that you want, but have something that's read there and you can review the code, you can understand a little bit more about it and can make the best of this system for you. So let's try to understand what exactly TrueNAS offers for you and why it's interesting. Let's make a little bit bigger here. So what TrueNAS offer today? TrueNAS offer the ZFS file system. And ZFS file system is really, really interesting. Why I say that's really interesting? Because they manage your data, they guarantee that save, and also you can create massive pools. You can create a pool that is almost one pentabyte or over one pentabyte and is still manage the system as the same way that would be a small file system. Only remember, more storage, more run, it's recorded. Also, they have a fantastic option for snapshot and replication. Do snapshot just work. You know that you're gonna do a snapshot and if you need to recover that data, it's not a backup, but if you wanted to recover that data, you can go for a snapshot, recover this data, and that, that's it, it's sorted. Also, with the TrueNAS scale, they have the option for use Docker, to use Kubernetes, and you have a lot of different applications that you can add on this. Also, TrueNAS have the option for virtual machines, so you don't need to only stop with TrueNAS, you can have different machines inside this TrueNAS, and because your NAS can be 20 by 7 running, is good if you need this virtual machine as well, 20 by 7. You can have a lot of stand applications, or with this case, you can add a lot of Docker containers, what make your system kind of hybrid and work quite well, and you have the support for Active Drive. You wanna ask, well, Alan, what is Active Drive? Active Drive it's connect with Azure, and that um, let's say it's a system for Microsoft that allowed you to have a password manage between your Azure and password manage between your TrueNAS without needing to update it. And uh, you're gonna ask, Alan. It's really similar for a lot of other systems. Yes, it's really similar for a lot of systems. And this reason that I put this table here. Let's put a little bit smaller for don't cover myself. And in this table, I have a comparison between NAS scale, Unraid, OpenMediaVal, and Synology DSM. So what I use, I use open source, Docker, simple, and stable. So about alignment, I think that they lose a little bit about it, but TrueNAS scale and the open Val is totally free, it's open source, and if you wanted to use Unraid, you need to pay a license. 
but if you want to use Synology SM, you need to buy the device. You cannot only buy the license and put in any computer, you need it to be a dedicated device to run Synology SM. And Android, you can run with more options, but you must have this license. All those applications, all those platforms work with Docker, so it's not a differential for anything. Unraid, OpenMediaVal and Synology is really simple to set up, it's plug and play. You go there, install, you run, and that's it. If you go for Trunasis K, you have more options, but it's more complex. If you want to create ACL for the OpenMediaVal, you only select which user they have access, and that's it. In the Trunasis scale, you need to create group, supergroup, mask, and other things, get permissions. If you want permissions not correctly, maybe the person will not have access, and other things. For stability, how long this system is already marked, Trunasis K, Unraid, and Synology and DSM work really well, not so much issues. They update, they keep the service update or this open system update, and you know that everything's fine. For OpenMediaVal, they still develop, it's already revision 7, but they still develop, they still improve, they still change things around, and sometimes work, sometimes just break, and sometimes you need to restart or reinstall your operating system. Not necessarily that your data will get lost, but you need to go for the pain to set up everything from zero, and sometimes it's not ideal. So in this way, why it's worth to use Trunas? Okay, if you need ZFS or if you want to have a really well stable file system, ZFS will be the best one. You can have a pulse, you can have a suppose, you can have a cache in the system, you can have a big storage, really massive storage, and you know that this data will be safe and not corrupt your data. Also, if you have a tiny budget, this will be the best option because totally free, you can set up the system that you want and you have a little bit requirements, but you can set up the system that you want and that will work. Other platforms, you cannot set up the same way. The easiest one, it's OpenMediaVal that basically install everything, but sometimes don't work. If you need a really reliable snapshot replication, TrueNAS is really good for it because in snapshots, you can create lots of snapshots, you know that the schedule will be working, and if you want to recover this data, you know that you will be able to recover the data without any issue. If you have really powerful hardware, TrueNAS will be the best one because it will run smoothly, will run really well, and principally if you have more than 8 GB of RAM memory, this will be ideal for you. And if you need Active Directory for integration, if you have a company, everyone uses Microsoft, and that you want to connect it or integrate it, for this case, TrueNAS will be really good and really easy to set up. But it's not everything perfectly have the noun sign for TrueNAS. TrueNAS have things that is not worth. Let's say you want to use TrueNAS. You need to have a lot of learning curvature to arrive at that stage that you know what you need to do. Because it's not only put permission for users, you need to create a proper SL with all the configuration. If you want to configure the groups, you need to configure it properly with permissions of the group properly. Anything that you want to do, it's a little bit more complicated. If you go for OpenMediaVal, it's just install and that's it. So your learning curvature needed to be high and you need to know a lot of things before you are confident to make your system running or before you put all the data that you really trust in that TrueNAS because potentially you can break it and you don't want to lose your data. The interface is a little bit confused because not so intuitive. You cannot only find everything in a way that um, a normal person or a person that never use uh, this system will know. So if you want to set up your system for first time, get used with OpenMediaVal and that you go for TrueNAS if you understand a little bit the base. The bad thing that's not necessary that all the hardwares will work with TrueNAS because different for OpenMediaVal, you can install it, let's say in a Raspberry Pi, and that will work. TrueNAS is a little bit different. You need to have some requirements. You need to have a more powerful system. You need to have at least more than 8 GB of RAM memory. You need to have things that sometimes you don't have and that uh, put you out for the TrueNAS user. But if you have a system that's new, powerful, with 8 GB of RAM memory more, yes, you're not gonna have any problem and that if you are key to learn, you will not be unhappy with this system. 
So, in other words, let's try to understand why you want to choose TrueNAS in 2025 and if this system is yours or not. If you wanted to have a really reliable file system, that's the ZFS, this one will be for you. If you have in mind, before was TrueNAS Core that run with a free DBS and that have a lot of limitation of apps on the apps that was configured, you have lots of other limitation. In, the, in this case with Debian, you don't have those, you know that uh, you're gonna have uh, Docker, you know that you have a uh, more update system based on Debian. If you are a beginner, it will be a little bit more trick for you to set up the system to make all the configuration. You can learn, you can have uh, lots of videos, a lots of tutorials, a lots of uh, instruction in the, the TrueNAS website, but you need to learn how to configure it and sometimes it's not one minute to do the activity, you're gonna take a little bit longer to learn how to do it. Other thing is totally free. You're not gonna pay for any license unless you want to go for the enterprise option. It's totally free. You not need to buy the license and if you want to uninstall, install other system, you can do it and you will not have that initial cost for you to set up your system, only time for you to set up the system. So, in this way, we arrive in the end of the video. I hope that you guys like the video. If you like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave your like. Consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet. And see you next time.